Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Jenny Bakos on the line, and she's founder over at How Novel Communications, also known as HNC. Jenny, welcome to the show. Hi, Adam. Thanks for having me. So uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic, so marketing for tech startups and also some community management we're going to work in there. But before we do that, let's get a little bit further into what you're doing over at uh, HNC. Tell me a little bit more about your company, please. Yeah, um, so HNC was founded in 2020, um, and it was really done with the belief that every company has a novel story to share. Um, So my team and I, we consider ourselves storytellers in the sense of offering digital marketing and community management services to our clients and helping them tell a compelling brand story. So um, I think that's a great transition to get into today's topic. So marketing for tech startups. Um, So I know that's one of your focuses. Uh, Where do you want to begin with that one? Yeah. um, So a little bit about me on that front. Um, I worked for some tech startups like Bosch, um, and I helped them with a robotics project there as well as Center Code um, and doing some beta testing work with them. And, uh, some of the clients that we've had at How Novel Communications include Logitech and Ultimate Years. So definitely something I'm very passionate about. And I think the strength I always bring to the tech startup space is taking a very technical company, which, you know, in my experience could be, you know, a home robot, for example, and mm-hmm. really putting the human spin on telling that story to to customers. So one of the things I always try to go into is just, you know, always approach your community and your marketing efforts with an open mind and try to really empathize with your current customers as well as your potential customers, you know, who are the people that you're trying to grow to and really level up to the next stage. Um, so the things I look at first and foremost is just really creating a baseline for your community. Who are all the people that are purchasing your product right now, are visiting your website, where are they interacting with your brand, looking at all of your social media and advertising efforts, as well as your in-person events as well. Um, a lot of, you know, Time needs to be spent gathering feedback from your internal team about, you know, what the hits and misses are, what messaging they find resonates with people, what the product team, you know, really wants to be focused on, and maybe new features that are coming out so that you can start thinking ahead. And when you create that baseline of really what your entire community looks like um, and what sort of their touch points are, then that's really when you can focus on the marketing efforts and really dig in and just um, think about, you know, where you need to head what messaging works and work on that through blog posts. It can be social media. It could be maybe more in-person videos um, or, you know, partaking in podcasts like this with your leadership team. Um, But just doing that and then just keep growing from there and constantly tinkering with that. So I know this is going to vary from um, from obviously company to company and size of company and, you know, their communities they already have established or if they're just starting. Mm-hmm. But what do you find are some of the common mistakes that a lot of tech companies make when um, kind of going towards the marketing com- and community management side of things? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I would say the number one uh, common thing that I've experienced personally with clients is you know, that first introductory call that they have, they say, how can we go viral? How can we quickly level up to <laughs> 10,000 followers? It's a golden question. Um, and I think for me, it's always expectation setting with people. Um, and I actually kind of go by the golden rule that the first 100 is your hardest. You're starting with zero credibility online, maybe zero mm-hmm. product out in the world. And it's really convincing people that you have something compelling to share with the world and that they should follow you now. Um, I know even myself, if I see an account, you know, maybe on Instagram or a website that their email newsletter doesn't look as sharpened as it could be, you know, I hesitate giving them that follower like. Um, Mm -hmm. And so for me, I really work on, you know, how can you spend the time from the very beginning, which with a lot of tech startups, a lot of time, you know, I'm working with clients that it's maybe a five-person team and they've done zero marketing efforts other than a coming soon landing page. So how do you move up from there? And I think it's creating a very consistent, very cohesive online brand feel. A lot of tech startups, you know, maybe they contracted out to one person to do their Facebook and another person to do Instagram and 
a whole other person to design the website. And when you click amongst all those links, which mm -hmm. for someone first discovering a brand, you can, you know, explore a company's entire web presence in as little as two minutes if you're really rapid fire and going. Um, so I think it's very important to have that entire click through experience feel very branded, having a color scheme, having a consistent message so that as they're clicking through, they feel, oh yeah, I'm in the right place. And they seem pretty professional for someone who, you know, maybe only has 20 Instagram followers. Or maybe it looks like there's a very, you know, low social footprint. So that's the thing that I like to focus on, just making it cohesive from the start. And then from there, having a really consistent game plan. How often are you going to be pub publishing blog posts? Are you going to be publishing them? Or is video really what's going to be your bread and butter? And coming up with that game plan sooner rather than later, um, a lot of the clients that I work with think, oh, you know, we're going to come up with our editorial calendar a couple years from now when we have a dedicated writer on the staff. Like, that's our big <laughs> concern. We just need to buy followers. Um, and that's something that I always advise against, you know, act like you're that company today rather than three years from now. You know, it's just like coming up with the editorial calendar, setting the expectation with your founder team that they are expected to share their expertise and interact with customers from the get-go. Nothing should be beneath you when you are a startup. Everyone should be wanting to share, you know, what they're passionate about with the product or the company um, and getting that message out into the world. So I think that's Probably my, my favorite thing to do with founders when I talk to them on the phone is just telling them, you know, I will be expecting you to write blog posts or sit down for an interview with me and my team so that we can generate content that is going to feel like it's coming from you, whether or not you have the time to dedicate to that, but let us coach you through that. That's awesome. And I love that you said the first thing people ask you is, how do we just go viral? And I'm like, I always tell people, I'm like, do you really want to go viral? You have zero social print, footprint. Exactly. If you go viral right now, you understand what's going to happen. You're going to leave a bad impression on more people. That's all that's going to happen. Like, exactly. Not, especially if you're a company that's just trying to sell a product. If they can't find anything else except for that thing that went viral, you're in trouble. Yeah, no, you, you have to walk before you run. Awesome. So, Jenny, um, that being said, if um, if somebody's listening to this and they want more information on HNC or what you do or to connect, um, two-part question. Um, part one, um, what are the right types of companies and or niches that you like working with? And then part two, how do they, how do they connect with you? What's the best way for them to follow up? Yeah, um, the people I love working with are change makers. My background personally is in the tech startup space. But everyone on my team has worked with organizations like the MILB, uh, NCAA. So we're, we're actually coming from a pretty wide range of expertise. Um, and so our whole mission in finding or in funding this company was working with change makers. So it could be an individual who is starting an eco-friendly yoga studio. That's actually a client that's on the horizon for us that I'm really excited about. Um, or it could be a tech startup, you know, like that is in the home robotics space, which obviously is my jam and something that I love working on as well. So I, in creating this company, I really wanted to not necessarily create a niche market for ourselves and that, you know, sometimes an inspiring client can be, you know, a local bookstore owner who just wants to zhuzh up their homepage and really, you know, embrace modern technology and marketing efforts, which that's something I'm always game for. Um, and then the best way to reach out is just visiting us online at HowNovelCommunications.com um, and just shooting us an email. Fantastic. Well, hey, Jenny, it's been great catching up with you and really appreciate you sharing your marketing tips for tech companies and also on community management, so really high-level stuff there. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, definitely give us a subscribe there, but leave us some comments also in the video. Love to know what's going on in your world and what kind of businesses you're working on. And let's, let's take the conversation over to the YouTube community. And Jenny, thanks again for coming on the show.